we are going to look at placing metal deck and open web steel joists and controlling their span direction. So I am uh, in one of our tutorial buildings right now and if we flip to the section of that uh, we use some generic 200 millimeter concrete slabs for the floor and the roof. Instead what I'm going to do is change the second floor and the roof uh, to a composite slab. So they are uh, 160 millimeter concrete with 50 millimeter metal deck. So there it is. Now they're both composite slabs. Uh, one has uh, one is correct for the floor, but for the uh, roof we don't want the concrete composite slab. So let's edit that further. So I highlight it, choose Edit Type. We're going to duplicate this, and what I'm going to do is just call it a metal deck. So okay and in the metal deck uh, now we're going to edit it to get rid of the concrete uh, cast in place slab. So we want to use the metal deck all by itself but if you look here they have set a single thickness for these two elements. If I highlight the metal deck you'll see that it is uh, bound to the layer above. Uh, so what I need to do is unbound that. If I try to get rid of the concrete as it sits now, which is all I really want to do, if I say delete, it says our total thickness cannot be set to zero. So that's why I go back to the structural, uh, to the metal deck. And instead of having it bound to the layer above, which is useful in a composite situation, but in this case I want the deck to be independent. So I choose standalone deck. Now it shows its thickness of 50 millimeters. So now I can go back and delete the concrete and everything is okay because we have that thickness. So I'll say okay to that and okay. And that puts our metal deck in uh, for the roof and down below we have the composite deck. Both levels still need open web joists to be placed. While we're looking at this though, I want you to see that the you can see the profile of the metal decking in that section. And if I go to the other section and zoom in, the metal deck is running across. So it has a set direction for its structural span. So I've got the roof deck highlighted. Now I'm going to go, you can see there's an edit boundary button visible now. But rather than doing that in section, I'm going to leave that highlighted and go to the second level and then choose edit boundary. So here it shows in pink lines the boundary that my decking is spanning. And if you look on one of the lines, there are two parallel lines expressing the direction that this decking is spanning. Okay, So this decking is spanning up and down on the page, which suited our particular joist direction. So that does that is the way I want it. But let's say we wanted it to span the other direction. Then if you look while we're in the edit boundary mode, we can go up and change span direction. Okay, so if I click on span direction and just choose another line, instead of a vertical line on the page, I choose a horizontal line. You can see that the double lines have moved over here and I've changed the st structural span direction of the deck from up and down on the page to left to right. So if that was what I needed, I would say okay to that. But I'm going to cancel out because I do want my decking to run up and down on this page. But just so you know, that's how you edit a direction. So I'm going to quit that. Yes, it warns me. Are you sure? And yes, I am sure. So if I flip back to the building section, uh, I'll zoom out a little bit here. You can see I've already put in some joists on one side and they're spanning perpendicular to the deck so you can see everything is, is running the correct way. So what I'd like to do, to do is show you how those joists go in. We'll mimic that on this wing of the building. So back to level two. What we're going to do here is I am under the structure tab and uh, you can place individual joists and it seems unusual to use the beam button and not the truss button but if you use the beam button you can place I'm gonna save my work first if I go back to structure and use the beam button uh, you can place individual structural items and so if you look at what I have loaded here I have a girder loaded and some other uh, K series joists, some LH series bar joists, another parallel cord bar joist, a wide flange beam. So uh, this is all held under the structural framing category. So I have a joist that I want to use, but if you need to load certain joists, I want to show you how to do that. 
So I'm just going to escape out of that under the beam button. Once you click that and go to edit type, we can load a new family. And I just want to show you where that loads from. Uh, I'll back up so you can see where it comes from. And basically it comes from the metric library. And we scroll down to structural and choose framing. So the beam button works for all kinds of framing and I'm going to use some steel framing and then we have some different materials to choose channels and joists etc. So I loaded the K series, the LH series and several other series so that's how you load them. I'm just going to cancel out because I've got what I need and I'm going to cancel out of that. Now while in the beam button I want to make sure of a couple of things. I want to make sure that my placement is correct for what my ne next step is going to be and I want to place roof joists so I have them set to be at the top of the roof deck. Uh, I've taken away 3D snapping just to be uh, so I don't get any confusing picks when I lay this out and over here uh, it says top of roof so we're all set to go oh and the joist type I have the 8K series uh, 12K3 which is about a 250 millimeter deep joist so I have to do all of that first under the beam button then I'm gonna escape and now to place the beam if I just had one beam or joist to place that would have been the method but I want to place a whole system uh, of structure so I'm gonna use the beam system so it allows me to place multiple objects. So now based on what I had already chosen it will use that information and just place multiple instances of that joist. So I pick on this and uh, I'm going to get ready to check this. It says work plane is top of roof. You can see that that's grayed out so I had to set that before. Uh, I have gone ahead and set the elevation for my beam system to be 50 millimeters below the top of the roof deck. That allows for the, the thickness of the roof deck. I'm also going to set uh, some parameters here. The layout rule, I have decided to set it at a fixed distance as opposed to a fixed number or a max spacing, etc. And that fixed distance is my choice and I've set it at 1800 millimeters, which of course would be something you get from the consultant engineer. So I'm happy with all that and my beam type is shown here as well and I can change that after the fact so you don't have to do it all up front but that's where it comes from as a default. So I'm happy with all of that setting. Now what I would like to do is set a boundary for these joists to span. So I'm choosing boundary line and you will see now I'm going to place a boundary around these load bearing CMU walls. So I'll pick my first point at the edge, outside edge of that load bearing wall. Now if I go to the right you'll see that it will set my joist span direction left to right. So my first line is very important. If I go down the page with my first line then the joist span would be up and down on the screen. So pay attention to your first pick. So I'm going to do a horizontal line on the page. That has set my spanning direction. The rest of the lines now will just define the boundary for span points. So I'm going to the outer edge of my CMU load bearing walls. And I'll just close this box. This is one area that we're spanning our structure. So you can see the definition of that boundary now in the pink rectangle and at the top you can see the deck, uh, sorry, the structure direction is all set. So we should be good to go. All my parameters look right. I'm going to put a check mark in there and then we'll go to our section and see how it reads. Now right now we can't see anything in plan and uh, I want to show you how you can adjust that so you can see what you just inserted rather than going to the section right away. And that has to do with setting your uh, view, uh, view depth. So I'm just going to hit escape here and I'm just in my regular view and the view range is set here. Currently my view range is set to be uh, cutting plane from the second floor is 2300 millimeters above the floor. That's a little bit high, that's above the doors. It should be more like 1800. So let's, let's do that and see what happens. There you go, so now we can see our doors were cutting at the appropriate level. Uh, if I want to elevate that cutting plane line so I see the roof joist that I just installed, I need to raise the, the cutting plane line. So instead of guessing at a number, let's go to our section and see where I would have to be to see those joists. Now you can see the joists are 
correctly positioned is relative to the deck. But this door is about two meters high, so 1800, our cutting plane is at 1800 right now. That's how we're cutting through the doors. The, if you look here, based on our spot elevation, from the top of the second floor to the top of the roof deck is 3500 millimeters. So if I cut somewhere around the 3300, uh, millimeter mark, I should be able to be cutting through my joists and therefore see them in plan. So let's go back to the plan. So view range, edit, I want to change this from 1800 to 3300 was our estimate. Now our upper section has to be at least that or higher so I'm just going to make sure that it's tall enough and I'm going to put it to four meters. The top level has to be above the cutting plane. Okay, so I'm set now and I'm going to apply that and say okay. And there they are. Now we can see the joists. So this is helpful. You can see our cutting plane line went above the doors now, so we don't see the doors. But if I needed to edit these individually, I have the ability to click on them and I don't have to go to my section necessarily just to see them. Okay, but once you're happy with how things are set up there, we can go back and change our view range back to a reasonable cutting level of about 1800 or 6 feet and this can come back to 32 or 3300 as long as it's higher. Okay, and that's it.